اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ٹوڈے از دی ٹاپک آف ڈسکشن از ڈرگز یوزڈ ان اوفتھلمالوجی نو آئی ول ڈسکس دی کیموتھراپی آف مائکروبیل ڈیزیزز ان دی آئی ان دی کیس آف دی ٹاپیکل eye drops the root is the transcordial absorption which accumulates in the aqueous humor then the distribution to intraocular structures trabecular meshwork pathway outlet and the distribution to systemic circulation now the other roots the different roots which can be used for the ocular eye diseases are the topical which is convenient economical relatively safe and then subconjunctival subtenone and retrubulbar injections can be used in the case of interior segment infections posterior uveitis cystoid macular edema and then the intraocular injections in case of the anterior segment surgery or infections now the intra vitreal injections are used for cases such as endophthalmitis or immediate local effect subconjunctival injections are used to achieve higher concentration drugs which can't penetrate cornea due to large size penetrate via sclera. Subtenone, anterior subtenone disease anterior to the lens, posterior subtenone is used for disease posterior to the lens. Retrobulbar in case of optic neuritis, papillitis, posterior uveitis and for the anesthesia before surgery. Or peribulbar for anesthesia before surgery. Now the antibacterial agents for ophthalmic use are the, for example azithromycin, one person solution in case of conjunctivitis, ciprofloxacin, 0.3 person solution in case of conjunctivitis, keratitis, Keratoconjunctivitis, corneal ulcers, blepharitis, dacryocystitis. Erythromycin ointment is used 0.5% in case of superficial ocular infections involving cornea or conjunctiva. Getifloxacin can be used in conjunctivitis. The gentamicin sulfate can be used 0.3% in conjunctivitis, keratitis, levofloxacin can be used in conjunctivitis and corneal ulceration. Its concentration can vary from 0.5% to 1.5%. Monofloxacin 0.5% solution is used in conjunctivitis, ofloxacin solution 0.3% in conjunctivitis and corneal ulcers. Tobramycin sulfate solution or ointment both can be used in the external infections of the eye, especially in small children. Now the antiviral agents which are commonly used in case of the viral infections include trifluoridine topical 1% solution in herpes simplex and keratoconjunctivitis. Acyclovir orally can be used 200 mg to 800 mg tablets or intravenously in very severe cases of herpes zoster, herpes simplex, iridocyclitis. Velocyclovir can also be used orally 500 to 1000 mg in case of herpes simplex, keratitis, herpes zoster of thalmicus in very severe cases. Similarly, fan cyclovir 
orally 125 to 25 milligram tablets in case of severe infections of herpes simplex keratitis or herpes zoster keratitis of thalmitis. Now I will discuss the drugs which are commonly used in outdoor department or preoperatively for diagnosis and for fundoscopy and for the refraction of small ch children and in the case of the uveitis. Now the drug such as atropine is cycloplegic and mid causes midrasses and similarly scopolamine, home atropine, cyclopentolate and tropicamide can be used. Cycloplegic midriatics are parasympatholytic agents and are commonly used. They block the action of choliner cholinergic stimulation causing paralysis of accommodation and pupillary dilatation. Indications include refraction, inflammation of uvea, malignant glaucoma. Adverse reactions include transient stinging and blurring, transient stinging and burning, increase in intraocular pressure, allergic re lead reaction, hyperemia, flushing and dryness of skin, blurred vision, dryness of mouth and nose, anhydrosis, fever, bladder distension and CNS disturbances. Now the cyclopentolate 0.5 percent is used as opposed to 1 percent for infants. This is because drug absorption through the conjunctival epithelium and skin is more rapid in infants compared to adults due to immature metabolic enzyme systems in neonates. Faster onset of action and shorter duration of effect. Cycloplegia occurs in 30 to 45 minutes of installation. One drop is repeated within five minutes and point zero plus 0 0.75 D will be subtracted from retinoscop retinoscopic findings. Now the atropine mechanism of action of atropine, it causes reversible blockage of the choly cholinomimetic action at the muscarinic receptors. The blockage by block by a small dose of atropine can be overcome by a larger concentration of acetylcholine or equivalent muscarinic agonist. Atropine is highly selective for muscarinic receptors. It does not distinguish between M1, 2 and 3, M3. Pharmacological actions of ectropy includes heart rate decreases at low dose, increases at high dose. Lungs, it inhibits histamine induced bronchoconstriction. In eyes, midriasis but long lasting salivation is reduced, sweating is reduced. Now, tropicamide, the most commonly used midriatic in the outdoor department, it blocks the effect of acetylcholine released, causes midriasis and cycloplegia both. 0.5 or 1 person acts within 20 to 30 minutes and effects last for 6 to 8 hours. Midriasis is more pronounced. It prevents pupil constriction in response to indirect ophthalmoscopy and retinal photography, independent of iris pigmentation. Now, the adrenergic ag agonists such as phenylephrine, 
concentration varies 0.1 to 5 to 10 percent eye drops acts on alpha 1 adrenergic receptors mio induce vasoconstriction and midriasis to break posterior synecy can produce midriasis even in patients treated with strong myotics now i will discuss the drugs used in glaucoma now basically the aqueous humor is produced or secreted by the ciliary body in the posterior chamber root of drainage are primarily 90 percent through the trabecular meshwork and 10 percent through the uvo scleral outflow mechanism of action now the most commonly used in the drugs used in the glaucoma are beta blockers the first drug of choice for primary open angle glaucoma lower intraocular pressure by de reducing aqueous secretion due to their effect on beta 2 receptors they can be known selective beta 1 and beta 2 such as timolol levobinolol metiprenolol cartilol and selective beta 1 blockers such as betoxalol pindolol and metaprolol now the mechanism of action the the antagonize the effect of catecholamines reduction in aqueous secretion topical beta blockers reduced aqueous formation by 24 percent to 48 percent in awake humans beta blockers are ineffective during sleep now adrenergic agonists their mode of action is decreasing aqueous formation by constricting the ciliary blood vessels by increasing uvo scleral outflow by an increase in prostaglandin synthesis adrenergic agonist can be alpha and beta agonists like epinephrine dapivephrine phenylephrine and they can be B A alpha 2 selective such as aproclonidine and brimonidine Now the cholinergic drugs are also used in glaucoma. The, they contract the RS sphincter and constricts the pupil, causes meiosis. Contraction of the longitudinal fibers of the ciliary muscle producing tension on the scleral spur, opening the trabecular meshwork and facilitating aqueous outflow. Contraction of the circular fibers of the ciliary muscle relaxing the zoneolar tension on the lens equator leading to accommodation now the cholinergic agonists can be direct acting or indirect acting direct acting activate cholinergic receptors directly at the neuro affected junctions of the iris sphincter muscle and ciliary body indirect acting cholinesterase inhibitors exert their cholinergic effects primarily by inhibiting cholinesterase thereby making increased amounts of acetylcholine available at cholinergic receptors the most commonly used cholinergic drugs are the is the pilocarpine now the decreases intraocular pressure 15 to 25 percent peak occurs after one and a half to two hours effect lasts up to six to eight hours gel form can also be used in cholinergic drugs are pigment dependent 
such as blue eyes show maximal ocular hypotensive responses. Darkly pigmented eyes demonstrate a relative resistant to IOP reduction. May require polycarbon solutions in concentrations exceeding 4%. Now, the indications of cholinergic drugs are acute and chronic narrow angle glaucoma, open angle glaucoma, for prophylaxis of primary angle closure glaucoma until a peripheral iridotomy can be performed. Now, the ocular side effects of uh, pilocarpine in, includes accommodative spasm, meiosis, follicular conjunctivitis, pupillary block with secondary angle closure glaucoma, band cratopathy, allergic flap, blepharoconjunctivitis, retinal detachment, conjunctival injection, lead myoxemia, anterior subcapsular cataract, iris cyst formation. Now, systemic side effects include headache, broache, marked salivation, profuse perspiration, nausea, vomiting, bronchospasm, pulmonary edema, systemic hypertension, bradycardia, generalized muscular weakness, abdominal pain, diarrhea. Contraindications include the presence of cataract, patients younger than 40 years of age, new vascular and uveitic glaucoma, history of retinal detachment, asthma or history of asthma, high myopia, known hypersensitivity to drug. Now the more important anti-glaucoma drugs used are the prostaglanding analog. Originally discovered in the eye as mediators of the ocular inflammatory response a pro drugs converted to active compound by corneal estresis increases uveoscleral outflow as a mode of action prostaglandin stimulates collagenase and meta metalloproteinase to degrade the extraocular extracellular matrix between ciliary muscle bundles which is which in turn leads to the reduction of hydraulic resistance to uveoscleral flow the advantage of prostaglandins are that only once daily doses is required lack of cardiopulmonary side effects and have an additive role to the other anti-glaucoma medications. Ocular side effects of the prostaglandin analogs include corneal punctate erosions, pseudodendrites and herpes keratitis, recurrence, hyperemia of conjunctiva, lengthening, thickening, hyperpigmentation of eyelashes, irreversible hyperpigmentation in the iris, hyperpigmentation of the periorbital skin, cystoid macroedema after cataract surgery, allergy, allergy and anterior uveitis. Now the systemic side effects include occasional headache, skin rash, URTI. Now the Carbonic anhyde arrays inhibitors are also used in case of glaucoma. Mechanism of action is in they inhibit enzyme car carbonic anhydrase, reducing the aqueous humor formation and lower intraocular pressure. There is 99% of inhibition of carbonic anhydrase and decrease aqueous production. Now, the carbonic anhydrases can be used systemically and topically. Systemic carbonic anhydrases include acetazolamide, methazolamide, ethoxazolamide, and dichlorphenamide. The topically used 
carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are dorzolamide, brinzolamide, lodoxamide. Now the acetazolamide most commonly used can be orally or intravenous preparation, decreases intraocular pressure 15 to 20 percent, peak occurs after 2 to 4 hours orally or 30 minutes if given intravenously. Washout occurs in 12 hours in case of or oral and 4 hours in case of intravenous. Concentration includes in case of orally oral used is 125 milligram and 250 milligram tablet 6 hourly or 500 milligram sustained release capsules 2 times. For children 5 to 10 milligram per kg 6 to 8 hourly. Intravenous preparation in includes 500 milligram. Now the systemic side effects of acetazolamide include numbness and tingling of extremities and perior perioral region in the perioral region. Metallic taste symptom complex include decreased libido, depression, fatigue, malaise, weight loss. It, it can be gastrointestinal irritation, metabolic acidosis, hypokalemia, renal calculi, blood dyscrasias, and dermatitis. Ocular side effects may include transient myopia. Now, the contraindications to the acetazolamide include clinically significant liver disease, severe chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, certain secondary glaucoma, renal disease including kidney stones, pregnancy, known hypersensitivity to sulfonamides. Now, in addition to the uh, other drugs are also used in case of glaucoma, in very severe intraocular pressure rise. The most commonly used drug is the intravenous manitol or the oral glycerol or isosorbide. The mechanism of action is that the increased blood osmolality and there is osmotic gradient between blood and vitreous due to which water is drawn out from the vitreous. Now the manitol 20% solution is given over 20 minutes, onset is within 15 to 30 minutes, peak occurs 30 to 60 minutes, Last action lasts for 6 hours. Oral preparations include glycerol, isosorbide, glycerol usually used is 50% solution orally, onset in 20 minutes, peak in 50, 45 minutes up to 2 hours, duration is 4 to 5 hours. Caution should be taken in diabetics. Hyperosmotic agents have some side effects such as gastrointestinal includes nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramp. Cardiovascular system include angina, chronic heart failure, CNS includes subdural hematoma, headache, confusion, disorientation, and fever. Renal includes the diuresis and urea potassium loss. Others may include diabetic, ketoacidosis, and urticaria. Now, there are certain drugs which are used systemically and which have the ocular side effects such as topiramate, it causes angle closure glaucoma, hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine which is usually used in rheumatoid arthritis, it causes chloroquine amblyopia, bullseye maculopathy. Tamoxifen causes crystalline maculopathy. Vega batterine 
produces progressive and permanent bilateral concentric visual field constriction. Now, the ethimbitol and chloramphenicol and rifampicin. The ethimbitol is usually used in tuberculosis. It is very important and it causes toxic optic neuropathy and there is progressive bilateral central scotomas and visual loss. Oral steroids can cause elevated intraocular pressure leading to glaucoma and cataract formation. Other drugs which are in in used in ophthalmology are tear substitutes. They are hypotonic or isotonic solutions and they are used in dry eyes. 